and introduce okay. yourself. I'm uh, Lee Husky, and I'm from the University of Alaska in Anchorage. The thing, thing that's uh, similar, I think, about all places in the north tends to be their lack, their sparse settlement. They may have uh, places that are concentrated with population, but they're lightly settled compared to the rest of the world, and and this may sound silly, but they're far away, and, and uh, from an economic point of view, that really matters, because far away means uh, it's more costly, the transport stuff far away means it's uh, you're, you're last to hear when new things happen. Uh, so far away really matters in terms of the economics, and it's complicated when you're far away from any local place to sell your goods because there aren't very many people around. Yeah. Uh, Professor Husky, what do you think some of the implications for the populations and settlements of the North are from these sorts of economic um, trends or issues? Yeah, I, I think the, at least in our North in Alaska, one of the things that we find is there's two kinds of people that's, that live in the North. One group is, our, is an indigenous population that well, has been there for almost ever. And the other is a settler population. The settler population is, only, is attracted when something big happens, like a big discovery of resources or a military. So, something has to attract them. Uh, the indigenous population, you know, is, tends to be more stable. Uh, although both, at least in, in Alaska, both populations tend in the long run to move away when when the action dies down. And so one of the char population characteristics of the North, at least that I'm familiar with, is that people move unless there's something going on. And so people move away, I'm sorry, unless there's something going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what do you see as some of the issues around the future of northern economies in developed nations? <laughs> yeah, I, that's a... Not, being on the North, being far away from markets and being far away from people to be developed, you have to have something special. And the special thing for most Norths is some natural resource that's not available anywhere else, or not available as uh, as cheaply anywhere else. Um, the trick in the North, at least when it's when uh, transportation is costly, those resources have to be pretty bountiful. I mean, they have to be uh, able. You have to be able to harvest a lot cheaply um, to overcome the cost of distance. And so, finding that kind of resource, you know, there's a limited number of opportunities. Um, now, what we've seen. Uh, in some places is uh, a kind of resource that's only available in the north, uh, tourism kind of, a tourism kind of resource. So, so natural, a natural resource deposit to mine is one that, that's very rich in, uh, we call them bonanza resources after Bonanza Creek and, and, and the Yukon. The very rich, those attract new activity in the north, and once that activity's started, then other things may happen. Trouble with natural resource as an economic base is when the cost of resources get high enough to attract activity to faraway places. They also get high enough where people look for substitutes, either new technologies or if they find stuff where they didn't, you know, oil or rocks where they didn't think they were. And so it's hard, it's hard to think about the North um, consistently attracting the capital needed to develop because the very, um, the very reasons people the, the, the very reason that people are drawn to the North, high price resources, uh, sets off these other functions that substitute for that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I see this as a problem for, for the North in the future to provide a consistent, like a time consistent economic base uh, because price fluctuations will, will uh, you know, make. make I don't know what the word was, because price fluctuations will make the stability of northern development uh, uh, hard, hard to come by. Mm -hmm. And perhaps one last question, if sure. I may. Um, in uh, quite a bit of your, or quite a few of your papers I've read of your work, you talk about the importance of uh, government and uh -huh. institutions to uh, not only development in the north, but also populations. Um, perhaps you'd like to shed some light on some of some of 
with that stuff. Yeah, I, I think one of the um, one of the most important changes, in at least the North American North, counting Greenland, it's North America. One of the most important changes has been a revolution of institutions in the North that's transferred ownership, kind of ownership and control to the people who actually live there. Up until the 1970s, northern development really was development imposed on the people who lived in those places. And now those people are, are in many cases, if they're not driving the boat, they're actually getting paid for being there through taxes or royalty sharing or something like that. That's a revolution. And it and it's opened up all sorts of development. And in Alaska, not only do we have ownership by indigenous people of land with resources, now through a program called Community Development Community Development Quota, I think that's what it's called, where we have people people on the and the villages have ownership of fish in the sea. And so they use that to build a mechanized base. So so and this is institutional innovation at its best. Mm -hmm. Terrific. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Professor Husky. Oh, sure. Thank and, you. And uh, thank you from my students. All right. Good.